Hello friends, we got a job at Microsoft, but the thing is we are not going to stop lead coding because I like making these videos. Uh, the video we are going to do today is next permutation. And if we see some of the popular companies uh, who have asked this question, there are companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Bloomberg, ByteDance, Uber, Goldman Sachs, DoorDash, TikTok and Snapchat. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention to make this video. I hope you also find this entertaining. So this is a lead code medium problem and also a very well like problem on lead code. If we just want to understand the problem statement, the problem statement is only consist of one line that we are given an integer array called nums and we need to find the next permutation for this nums array. Now the question comes uh, which is very obvious that what does this next permutation is being defined as? Well, one thing to find out is that you can actually try to read this whole definition and try to understand that what does it mean or you can check out the example I'm trying to show you. Uh, suppose we are given integer array uh, that is like the value 1, 2, 3, right? So this currently there are three separate values. The thing is let's try to consider and let's try to create like a lexicographical value out of these three. So we will we can create a value that is like 123. Now if we want to create like a sorted ascending uh, thing using these three elements, like obviously uh, the next sorted element is going to be like 132. Why? Because okay, this value is 123. Using these three characters, uh, what is the next value we can make that is in the ascending order? Uh, we can make value 132. Now, if we want to make the next ascending value, the value we would be make uh, we would be able to make is going to be 213. The next value is going to be 231. The next value is going to be 312. Value after that is going to be 321. And after that, we won't be able to make any values. Now, if you look closely amongst these values, all the values are sorted in ascending order. Uh, for every single value, we are only picking the value that is going to be in its right, right place. So for 123, we are not going to put like 213 after 123 because this value is going to be smaller than this one. So that's why we are putting this 132 first. Uh, same way this 231 is also at the correct place compared to this 213 and 312. So that is the main logic behind it. Uh, so suppose in the question, if we are given the value that is like 123, then in that case, the next permutation has to be 132. But the thing is, we don't need to return 132 as the answer. We need to return answer as like 1, 3 and 2. So I think this explanation makes a little bit of sense. Let's try to see some examples to, to I try to understand that what does this problem is actually asking us to find. So in this case, okay, currently we are given the nums array with values 1, 5 and 6. So again, lexicographically, we will be able to make value 1, 5 and 6, right? So logically, what should be the next value in line? So next value has to be 165 uh, because any value after that would be uh, def would definitely be greater than this one. So this is going to be the next permutation. Again, same way if we are given the value 651. Now, this is a tricky case. Why? Because uh, if we try to do like permutation of this 651, uh, so originally the whole permutation is going to look like this. So this is going to be the whole permutation. So if the initial value is like 156, this, these are going to be the subsequent values. So this value 651 is representing this value 651 over here. Now, if we see there is actually no next permutation in this case. So if that is the case, basically we will have to return the smallest possible value and the smallest possible value in this case is going to be 156. So basically we are going to return 156 as the answer in this case. Uh, again, if we take another number, okay, so this is like four characters long. So in this four character long uh, number, the next permutation is going to be. So I know this is a very complicated question to understand, but the thing is once you get a grasp of how the permutations are being made, you can simply know that what is the answer going to be. Uh, so let's see that what are going to be different approaches to solve this problem. Okay, so the first approach we are going to try is going to be the brute force approach. Suppose this is the input we are given. So in the brute force approach, what we are going to do is depending on the input, first of all, we will try to make the smallest value possible. So smallest value possible in this case is going to be values 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Now after making the smallest value possible, we are going to try to explore every single values we can make inside the ascending sorted array. So the values we are going to get is. So just based on the few values, we were able to make like these uh, permutations and eventually we came to the value that exactly matches this value. And basically the next permutation after this uh, is going to be the answer we need to return. So in this case, we are going to return this as the answer 2143. 
the question is okay this approach gave us the correct answer but the thing is is this the right way to do it and the answer is definitely no why because even for a small example of four characters we ended up exploring a lot of possibilities like if you try to calculate the time complexity in this case the time complexity is going to be disastrous it's going to be big o of n factorial that is like the worst imaginable time complexity so we have to find a way to do something better so before we come up with the optimal solution, we are going to take these four cases. We are going to see that what is going to be the next permutation for every single one of them. And depending on the answer, I would be able to show you that what is the pattern that we are able, we have been able to establish. And using that pattern, we would be able to create our optimal solution. Uh, so first, let's start with this most initial case. In this case, all the values are actually ascending order, uh, increasing order, uh, which means that this is currently the smallest possible value we can make out of the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the next permutation in this case is going to be where this 5 shifts on this left side and this 4 shifts on the right side. Uh, so basically the answer we are going to get is this is going to be the next permutation for this value. Uh, notice that currently we had value 45 and we flip it to 54. We kept these values the same way they were because they were not needed to be changed right now. Uh, if we take this example, this is the exact opposite of this one. Uh, why? Because uh, this is the maximum possible value we can make. In this case, if we want to uh, see the next permutation, basically there is no next permutation, which means we will have to go back to the very first value. So this is going to be the answer. Using these two answers, we are not able to establish much of a pattern over here. But the thing is, now let's try to see some middle cases. So in this case, if we see, we are given value like 25431. So lexicographically, we have been able to make a value like 25,431. Now in this case, for the next permutation, we can either like try to see that, okay, what is going to be the value, but I'm showing you a different logic here. And the logic I'm trying to establish is that typically we always follow from the left hand side uh, to the right hand side. Uh, until the point we see continuous increasing elements uh, again i am talking about how to find next permutation and for that we will have to observe the current case that we have been given so over here so far one three four five uh, they are all currently in increasing order which means that they are at the correct locations uh, the thing is the moment we reach to this value number two 2 is actually smaller than 5 which means that the increasing order that we have been building up so far is no longer true. So because this increasing order is no longer true, we will have to do something with this, with this value number 2. Now we need to put it in some place where we are going to put it. The logic I am suggesting is that we, okay, now we have this value number 2. We know that we will have to put it somewhere uh, over here. Now, where we are going to put it, we are trying to find the next permutation, which means the ne immediate next value that is greater than this value uh, that we can make. So logically, what we are going to do is we are going to scan all of these values. We are going to see that, okay, what is the minimum value uh, from this 2 that we have? So currently, there is only one value that is less than 2, and that is this value number 1. Now for this value number one, we are not going to do anything with this value number one. But the thing is, the very next value that is of, uh, of uh, before value number one has to be the most immediate greater value that is compared to this two amongst uh, the remaining portion. Again, let me clean this up a bit and explain you again because this is the mo most important uh, topic. We check amongst these portions that, okay, what is the minimum, first minimum value we can find out that is less than this value number two. So that is value number one. Th what that means is uh, we already know that all of these values, they are ascending in increasing order, which means that the very next value has to be the value that is greater than two, but less than all the other elements before that. Again, if you don't understand, just rewind it and see it again, what I'm trying to establish. Uh, so basically, we found the value that is immediately greater than 2, but less than uh, this uh, remaining values. So what we are going to do is we are going to swap these two values. Uh, if we swap these two values, the answer we are going to get is, and this is the answer we are going to get. The thing is, uh, you, you would must be saying that, hey, this is not the correct next permutation. I know this is not the correct next permutation. But what this is, is that we actually found the first element that needs to be on the right place in order to generate the next permutation. And for all the remaining values, we simply need to reverse them. 
in the other way around. So if we reverse them, we will get a value that is 3, 1, 2, 4, 5. And this is going to be the next permutation answer for this original uh, input that we were given. So basically, we can just ignore these, this case right now. And thing is, this is going to be the next very next permutation. Now again, let's go back on the logic that how we were able to generate this value. Well, uh, definitely we notice that all of these values 5, 4, 3, to, uh, 5, 4, 3 and 1, they have already been at the correct place, which means we have exhausted all the possibilities for these values where we can make some adjustments and create like a greater value, but that still remains smaller than the next value. That means we will have to do something with this element. So we will have to replace replace this element with some other element. And the only way to replace that is to find the value that is immediately greater than this 2. Because remember, apart from 2, if we try to add 4 over here, then that won't work. Why? Because there is still going to be a permutation that we miss. And that is the answer. Uh, let's try to do the same logic over here again. So in this case, if we try to see uh, currently this 3, 4 and 5, they are increasing order, right? But we find this value number 2. Now 2 is immediately decreasing value compared to this remaining 3 values. Uh, so uh, sorry, compared to its previous value, which means we will some we will have to find some way to replace this 2 and make the changes amongst these values to generate the next permutation. Uh, how we are going to do it is that okay we will have to find a value that is greater than uh, 2 but uh, there is still exists some value less than it the question is all the all these values they are all greater than 2 so we are trying to find the immediate greater of 2 so which means we will have to uh, swap the values and you guessed it correctly between this 2 and 3 and that is exactly what we are going to do so if we swap that we are going to get an answer that looks like this now in this case, again, this is not the correct, but the thing is these two portions, they became at the correct position. And for the remaining part, we will have to just reverse that. So if we reverse that, the answer we will get is, it would be the immediate next permutation for this answer. So logic we are applying is that basically we scan through the any given number. So in this case, suppose this is the number we are given. What we are going to do is we are going to jump through all the values till we find a value where uh, the current value is actually less than its previous value. So in this case, that value we can find is 4, which means we will have to replace 4. So these three places, they are already in the correct place. We don't have to do anything with them. Now for this 4, what we are going to do is we are going to see that what is the immediate greater value of the 4. So one way to do it is to find like the lesser value than 4. So lesser value than 4 is for 2. Uh, so one value before that is going to be the immediate greater value compared to 4. That is 5. So we will get a value that looks like this. And after that, all the values. So currently now these four elements are in the correct place. All the other values we will have to do a reverse. This is the answer we need to return. In my personal opinion, this is a very hard question uh, because without major hints, you won't be able to solve it in an actual interview if you haven't seen it. But the thing is, we are planning for a, a FANG. So basically, we will have to be vigilant and we have to make sure that we are able to crack these kind of questions. Uh, let's calculate the time and space complexity in this case. The time complexity is actually going to be big O of N because we only have to iterate over the given array like a couple of times. This is space complexity. Apart from using a couple of variables, we won't have to use any extra space. So we can also complete this in like uh, in place in constant space uh, complexity. Before we implement the next permutation method, we are actually going to uh, initialize a couple of helper methods. So first helper method we are going to create is going to be a swap method where uh, if we are given any two elements and we are given the given input array, uh, we would be able to basically swap their values. So depending on the index values, we would be able to make this that adjustment. Now the second helper method we are going to create is going to be the uh, reverse method. Now for this reverse method. Uh, we are going to again give uh, the given array as the input and we are also going to give the ith value as like the starting index from where uh, we need to start doing the reverse operation. We are also going to create a jth value as sort of like an end value uh, and that is going to be the length of given array. Now all we have to do is just run a while loop that while i is less than j uh, basically we are just going to call the swap method and uh, for the swap method, we are going to provide the values of nums, uh, j and i. And after that, we are going to increase the value of i. 
and we are going to decrease the value of j and this basically concludes our two methods that we have been trying to create now uh, let's go on the main method so from the main method first of all we are going to uh, we will have to run a loop uh, from the reverse end to find the first value where the increasing order does not match so we are going to initialize a variable called i and we are going to assign it to the value of nums.length minus 2 why we are doing it uh, nums.length minus 2 because we do not want to be in the out of bounds because we will always be we will always be comparing two i values at the same time now let's initialize our while loop that while i is greater than or equal to 0 uh, and uh, the number of uh, current i plus 1 is actually less than or equal to the nums of i so we are comparing two adjacent values each time uh, while this is true first of all we are going to uh, decrease the value of i so the moment this loop ends basically we would be at the correct place where the ith value is actually uh, not the correct value and needs to be swapped so then uh, we are going to check that way okay, if the given uh, value of i if that is greater than or equal to zero if that is the case which means we will have to do our swap operation uh, and we haven't found like the greatest value possible so if that is the case we are going to initialize a j variable and we are going to assign it to like nums.length minus one again okay again we are going to run a while loop that while uh, we will have to find that whether the jth value if that is less than or equal to uh, i if that is the case we will keep on decreasing the value of j so eventually we would be at a point where we are at the immediate value of j that is greater than i this is the case basically we are going to do like our swap operation and uh, we are going to swap the values of i and j after swapping the operation we will have to do the reverse operation for the remaining values so we are going to do the we are going to call the reverse method and we are going to uh, provide the value of the given array and we are also going to do i plus 1 because from i plus 1 we will have to reverse all the characters and uh, basically that's it uh, this should be able to provide us the next permutation uh, let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty fast compared to a lot of other solutions and uh, that's why this is like a re really good solution but it's a really tough solution to achieve i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you